All parents, they have their own unique way of bringing up their children, doing their best to raise them well. But as you know, nobody is perfect. And that is why when they look back, they all want to fix some of the mistakes that they've made in the past. And in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the things that, that they regret so that you can avoid making the same mistakes. Hi everybody, this is Life with Leonard and welcome to another episode. Now on this channel, I strive to motivate and inspire you to become the best version of yourself. And today's episode is definitely no different. Now I'm going to be sharing with you the 10 parenting mistakes that can ruin a child's future. Now this is one of those episodes. You know, if you are a parent or a parent-to-be, I would really encourage you to watch this full video because it will it will add so much value to your life when you have children you you have an opportunity to impact not only their life but for future generations to come so it is so important that you take all take in all these resources all the help that you can get to ensure that that you become the best parent that you can be you know there there are four quotes that that i live by and the first one is from nelson mandela where he says that there can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way in which it treats its children children are likely to live up to what you believe of them and children must be taught how to think, not what to think. And the greatest legacy one can pass on to one's children and your grandchildren is not money or other material things accumulated in one's life, but rather a legacy of character and faith. But before we start with today's episode, can I kindly ask you if you haven't to please subscribe to my channel, to like this video, to share it, and leave your comments in the comment section below. As you know, it's easy to subscribe. Firstly, it's free. And secondly, you can just hit that subscriber button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And please remember to hit the all notifications and that way you will be notified and you won't miss out whenever I upload new videos. Number one is punishing children in front of others. Now, sometimes mothers and fathers, and I want you to listen up, Mothers and fathers, they yell, they, they get mad, they, they punish their child in front of others. And in that moment, they are so caught up in their own frustration. And, and just, just on that point, you should never punish your child from a position of frustration, of anger. You should never do that. It is just wrong. And here in South Africa, I mean, corporal punishment is against the law. And, and in that moment, they are so, like I said, so caught up in, in, in themselves, in, in their own anger, that, that they don't care about the people around them, but it's not the same for the child. And what you need to realize is that children actually care about the opinion of other people around them. And public shaming undermines, I mean, as a parent, think about it. Public shaming undermines your children's self-confidence. And it makes them feel really ashamed. And it's hard for them. I mean, just think about it. A little child, it's hard for them to shake it off. And as a parent, remember, no child has asked to be here. You have made the decision. So take responsibility for your responsibility. And number two is, they missed out on the most important dates in their children's lives. Now, I know we are all busy. Life happens. But remember, your child is one of your main priorities. And of course, every parent has a lot of commitments. We know that. And juggling all of them is no easy feat. But children desperately need parents to be there for them. And in some occasions, that might not seem that important for an adult. But it really means a lot for the child. They need to have someone close to them at moments like these. Even if you think you have a good reason to miss your child's school play, for instance, do your best to be present. Find the time to go visit grandma, go to the theater, decorate your house for the holidays. And it is little things like that because that bond between you and your child, it will get stronger the more memories you make together. And just being there, I mean, you know, if your child's busy with a school play, this is a simple example. School play, doesn't matter how many people are in that, at that venue, it doesn't matter. Their eyes are only looking 
for one mom and dad. That's what they're looking for. So just be there. Otherwise, one day you will look back and you will have the biggest of regrets for all those memories and those moments and the times that you have missed out on. And number three is they didn't hug their children often enough. Now, you know, hugs is so important. When you hug your child, and how can I put this? When you hug your child, they feel loved. They feel protected. They feel appreciated. They feel accepted. They feel they belong. It is so important and it's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's not only a perfect way to show affection, but also it's scientifically proven to be good for our health because they help protect against stress. And besides, it's simply nice to hug your child. Unfortunately, sometimes parents don't do it as often as they should. Some of them think that being too affectionate with a child can make them less obedient. And others, especially if we talk about babies, they believe that holding and hugging a baby all the time means that they'll demand it too much in the future. But the truth is, the older they get, and anybody watching now with older children, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. The older the children get, the less they want to be hugged. So enjoy the hugs with your children while you can. And the next one is being too self-restrained. Now this is such an important one on this list because as a parent, and you know, there could be justifiable reasons, perhaps stress at work and I mean, there's a lot of issues going around. It could also be your own unsolved issues, anxiety and stress, and not just stress from work. It could be finances, things, I mean, worrying what's happening in the economy. And the reality of getting older, losing friends and family members you were very close to, perhaps you grew up together. And that said, it's important not to be too self-restrained and not being present or available or accessible to your child. It could have a detrimental effect on your child's emotional or and psychological development. And trust me, you don't want that. And next is bad habits. Now, parents are role models for their children. You, you should practice, and, and parents, you should listen up. You should practice what you preach. It should never be a case of do as I say and not as I do. Now, we know that's been a phrase that's been around for centuries. Good parents set a good example for their children. And if you really want to do right by your children and raise thoughtful, honest and loving adults, show them by example. Practice good stress management. Avoid emotional reactions. Explain your decisions and admit your mistakes. And number six is they didn't educate them about money. Now, for some reason, some parents, they avoid the topic of money with their children. Now, of course, these children don't believe that money grows on a tree, but they might think it just magically appears in an ATM. And without education on personal finance and responsible spending, children don't understand the real worth of money. And when they grow up, they find it hard to manage their own income. Giving your child some pocket money will teach them how to save up and spend wisely. Besides, you can let your teen earn their own money. They can mow the lawn of a neighbor or they can babysit. Now, all these tips, it will provide your children with the opportunity to learn more about things like budgeting, saving and being more responsible. And number seven is destruction of trust. There have to be certain rules concerning behavior, but children should still understand that they can trust their relatives. And children's trust, especially teenagers, is very easy to lose if parents lose control over their emotions and scare them off. This might lead to losing their emotional connection with the family and not feeling protected at all. Number eight is aggressive behavior. Now children develop better and they become healthy adults when their families are a safe island, a safe haven, from where they can venture out and explore the world. Children learn how to deal with problems by watching their parents when they have to deal with difficulties. Sometimes it's the children that causes this trouble and being rude to them or expressing negative emotions towards them at an early age can lead to problems with anger management. Number nine, escaping from their problems. 
Now, one of the best ways to end the problem is to walk away and forget about it. But that doesn't mean that things will just resolve on their own, like many adults believe. After a serious fight between parents and children, you have to try and fix the situation and restore the trust. And in order to do this, you have to calm down and speak as equals, showing respect to your child. In the beginning, hear them out and let them know that you are interested in how they feel and try to see the problem from their perspective. Then talk about your feelings. Explain the reason why you got angry and apologize. This is a way to show a child that you are not a new enemy and that you can be trusted again. And last but not least, and I really just want to end this episode off on a much lighter note, and that is take enough photos. It is a great way to, to just capture memories. You know, as you get older, the children moves out of the house, those photos, those memories, it, it will mean so, so much to you. The value of it, I mean, it might take some time now and a bit of effort and sometimes a bit of strain and a bit of frustration because especially when the children get older, they don't want you to take photos of them. But, but you as a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Speak to your parents. Many of parents, they wish they took more photos or they had access to cameras. And these days with, with smartphones and, and I mean with our access, how, how easy it is for us to take photos, it, there is no excuse. When your children grow up and leave home, the pictures will be there to remind you what a long way they've come. And besides, looking through those pictures together with your grown-up children lets you relive all their milestones and those beautiful memories together. And that's why not using your camera often enough is one of the regrets many parents can relate to. And you know, even though we live in a digital era, having a physical photo album can be a great and very nice family tradition. Thank you so much, everybody, for once again joining me on today's episode. If this episode was of value to you, can I kindly ask you, if you haven't, to please subscribe to my channel, to like this video, to share it, and leave your comments in the comments section below. It's easy to subscribe. Just hit on the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, and please remember to hit the all notifications, and that way you will be notified, and you won't miss out whenever I upload new videos. Thank you so much, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.